Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Daniel Richter I'm from the Technical Department at Cami Americas. And this training is going to be about the operator called Fernie for swing gates. And so the idea of this training is that you guys understand better the capabilities, the limitations, how to install it, how to program, everything you need to know for installation. So let's start with that right now. So first, let's do with a typical installation, the parts, basically the basic parts. Obviously, they are the operators that basically are the motors. It can be for two motors, one for each gate or one maybe just for one gate. And the control board, um, these motors operators have, uh, they need a control board to work. They by themselves, they're, they cannot work by themselves. So obviously you need the board right there close. Um, the remote control, uh, that's optional, but usually clients want a remote control to control open and close the gate. The selector is a wire, basically a selector. It can be a keypad, it can be a button, it can be a key selector. It's anything that it can control the gate, but in a wire way, with wires. A uh, warning light is optional also, but it's uh, recommended having a warning light blinking for warning anyone close to know that the gate is moving or it's about to close for automatic closing. Uh, photo cells, we recommend always having two pair of photo cells, one for, e one for the inside, one for the outside. I mean, a pair for the outside and, and a pair for the inside. Basically any vehicle or person going be basically being in the, in the area or where the gates move, it's always good to have at least two pairs of photo cells. So the gate, if it, for example, is closing and a car is there, it's going to stop and open again, for, for example. Uh, junction box, everything is connected with pipes and wires. So obviously there's a junction box to connect everything together. A physical stops. We always recommend having a physical stops. Basically it's something physical that stops the gate from closing to beyond the, the actual closed position and also for open position. Um, and the operators have their own uh, switch to close um, for, for stopping when closed and stopping for open. But it's always good to have a, also a physical stop to actually prevent the gate from keeping going in case of something fails or something like that. Uh, I'm going to talk about the furnace that has also the, the limit switches, but uh, that I'm going to talk about later. The courtesy light, that's optional, but sometimes you can off offer the client a light. It just light up the, the pathway. And this is the danger zones. Obviously you need to be aware of those and keep in mind so there's not uh, you your hands in the hinges or there's electricity and obviously the gates are moving and when they close, they, they can, there's a risk for entrapment. So keep that in mind and while you install and warn the users also. So a selection criteria, obviously there are many operators and I'm going to go the overview how to choose the op correct operator for the correct, for the site. And the first you need to consider what, where you install in the operator in the areas of application. It would be a home, maybe a single home, or maybe a, a multifamily home or commercial or industrial. In this case, the Fernie that we're talking about today, the Fernie can work in either of, of the situations because it's an intense abuse and there's other criteria like characteristics, like it has a color, or you need operator that is 24 volts, or you need operator for uh, 120. Uh, usually it is 120 and then a transformer and the control board change it to 24 volts in this case. Uh, so you need all the characteristics that, that the site requires and that way you can also choose the operator. But the main thing that is uh, obvious is the type of door, the length and the weight. Obviously the type of door would be swing gate operators. If it's sliding gate, for example, you need another type of operator. So in this case, it's a swing gate. Also the length. So each operator has a limit of how long it can be the each gate, each door, each leaf. So uh, you just make sure it's inside the limits uh, with the, each length. 
of the gate. And the weight also, obviously, there's a limitation for each operator, how, how heavy can be the gate. I'm going to talk about, more about that later. Um, another criteria is the where you're going to install it. And you need to consider the uh, width of the pillar that obviously it requires to accommodate the, the operator. In this case, the fern is fairly wide. So the pillar will have to be in, in wide enough to fit the fern in. If you don't have enough space, maybe you have to choose another kind of operator that fits uh, a more narrow pillar. So obviously take that in mind. And another criteria is the value C. We call value C the, the distance between the surface where you're going to put the operator and the hinge of the gate. That value is important because the operator, it can be physically far enough to reach the gate and has a limitation. Each operator has a limitation in, in the specs. It always says a value C, and this is a maximum. In the case of the Verney, that's the one that can reach very far uh, from the from the gate because of the articular arm. Um, so keeping that in mind, that when you go visit a site and evaluate the where you're going to install it, and you're going to choose which operator to use, if that value is very high. Yeah, maybe you cannot use another operator, but maybe you can use the Fernie. So that way is one way to, to choose which operator to, to recommend. And the value I is more obvious, but you need to keep in mind that you need some space for the operator itself, for the articular arm and all that. So keep that in mind that there's a, maybe an obstruction, a wall, maybe a, a plant or maybe a rock or something and make sure that it's clear enough for the operator to work in that area. Um, also, I'm going to overview the type of travel limits. There's an electronic operational delay, basically a timing way to, to, tell, to tell the, the motor that it reached the open position and the closed position. That's not very common to use anymore, but it's, it's a, still a way to, to manage the limits for opening and closing uh, timing. There's a mechanical and magnetic switch. Uh, there's a, basically the switch that tells the gate that it reached the open position and when it reached the closed position. The Fernie that we're talking about today, the Fernie has the limit switches for those. Later, I'm going to show how to adjust them. And there's an optical or magnetic encoders. Those are basically a revolution counter inside the motor. And they are used usually to know where the uh, basically, so the control board can know where the gate is uh, at all time. And you can use that for doing a travel limit. But in the case of the Fernie, you know, the, 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 Fernie, the case of the Fernie, it has uh, switches and also has an encoder, but just for doing the slowdown, not for, the, not for knowing the limits. This is an overview of the operators we have for swing gates. There's three, three types, articulated arm. Uh, the Fernie itself is an articulated arm. You see it right there. There's a worn drive. Those are very different type, but do the same. That is opening the swing gate. Uh, gate see, swing gates. And there's other ground. Other ground goes below the, the ground. You cannot see the operator. It's very slick uh, finish. So depending on the also the side, you will choose which type you want. And if you see that maybe the articulated arm is you want, then you will choose depending on the characteristics. This is one of the main characteristics we talk about. Uh, so the, I was talking about the C value, that is right here. So for the Fernie, it's 38 centimeters or 15 inches. That's uh, the farthest it can go any of the operator we have. Um, the length of the gate, it can be maximum four meters or so 13 feet. And the maximum weight for the Fernie is 800 kilograms or 1,700 uh, pounds. Um, but that's, uh, those values between the weight and the length of the gate is also, there's a, there's, a, there's a limitation between those two that requires some consideration. I'm going to talk about more about that later. For, for now, I'm going to go overview the basic features of the Fernie is intensive use. 
uh, means it can open and close uh, continuously and it's not going to overheat or anything like that. Uh, two models available, one is normal and, and the other one is for a fast version. Basically it just goes faster. Uh, see max uh, value, the, whatever we're talking about 15 inches. Uh, the operation is between 24 volts. Internally, the motor works with 24 volts DC. Uh, like I said, it was tra it's transformed by a transformer in the, in the control box, box. But it can be used also for with batteries in case of uh, uh, powder, uh, power outage. Uh, also, it can work with solar panels. Um, either way, so that, that makes it more uh, versatile. Uh, the electronic board is uh, there's two main models, the CLX24S and CLX24M. And I'm going to talk about a little more about that later. It can be installed in the left or right side. And the same operator can work with either left or right. Uh, there used to be more operators that work only for the left and operators that only work for the right. So that was confusing. Now we, we're making these uh, operators that work either way. Uh, maximum weight of the leaf, it can be 400 kilograms or 800 pounds. For more, I'm going to talk about the relation later about that. Travel limits uh, adjustable with switches so that you adjust when it's going to stop when open and when it's going to stop closing. This is the technical data. You can overview if you want. The most relevant thing will be maybe the current is seven amps for the normal version and seven uh, and five amps for the fast version. Uh, you can overview later if you want that part. So the, this is the parts that come in the, in the box. It's very simple. It's just a motor with a, there's a base plate and uh, there's a cover and also a articulated arm transmission. Uh, so this is the um, dimensions. Uh, but this is the, um, especially the C value is the most relevant thing here. C value, like I said, it was uh, 38 centimeters or 380 millimeter, millimeters. Um, uh -huh. This is the relation I was talking about. So we said that maximum it can handle 800 kilograms and it can handle four meter leaf or the gate itself, the lung. But it cannot be both at the same time. It can be 800 kilograms if the leaf is two meters or less. And it can be four meters, but only if it is 400 kilograms. So that relation is very important. Some people get confused about that. So keep that in mind that the leaf, if it's four meters or something like that, there's a relation between uh, those two. It cannot be the, at the limits of both uh, uh, specs. So keep that in mind, okay? Uh, so now we're going through the installation, the basic installation. One thing to keep in mind about this one is when you're choosing where you're going to install the operator. Like I said, the the the, the pillar or the wall has to be wide enough for the ferning. This here it says the the measurements, but mainly I want to point out is the height. In the case of the ferny, the articular arm is a, like an L shape, and the shaft goes from the below below to to up and that shaft has to fit there when you put it going to install it. So keep that in a minimum, it's going to be 290 millimeters. And so keep that in mind. If you put it too, too close to the ground, you're not going to be able to put the articulator on or take it out if you put it already. Also, the, this is the recommended uh, measurements for the where you're going to put the, the other side in the gate. Um, most important is it's going to be level, so it looks uh, nice. Um, so we obviously you can put the base and mark where you're going to do the holes and uh, put the anchors and then put the base, the base by itself first. Then you put some covers, uh, there's a cover on the bottom. There's a cover and the other one has a hole where the shaft is going to be, depending on you put it on the left side or the right side. So the motor can be either, you can flip it and put it to the right side or flip it to the other way to put it on the left side. Later, it's going to be more obvious about that. But anyway, you put the, the operator next and you can choose to, this, this is the way to release the, the gate. To install, it's important to know that, uh, that you can need to release it so you can move it by hand, the gate. 
uh, these motors basically you you cannot move it if they're locked you cannot move it by hand so you can release it with the, the lever they showing there and it can be in the top or it can be on the bottom depending on where it's installed that's one of the things i want to show here if it's in the left side the the, the level is going to be up and if, if you install the fernie on the right side of the gate the lever is going to be on on the down side there's a two holes for it's either way so obviously you release it you put the the articulated arm you install it on the gate there's a three holes so you can choose it. either you can adjust it that way and remember to put some grease in that hinge because it's going to be a it's metal just reduce the friction and so later after that uh, depending on if you install on the left side or the right side there's the limit switches i was talking about so they're already there but uh, if you need to change it swap then you need you can check it off with only two screws and there's two small plastic parts that goes on the shaft to uh, to uh, actuate the switch one for the opening one for the closing so one way to do that is that by hand it's unlocked so by hand just close the gate and where you want it to stop and then with a little plastic uh, 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 actuator you're going to there has two screws that you can get it loose so you can move it put it where when it's going to reach the switch and then tie it up with the screws so it, it stays there and do the same for the open uh, manually open the gate when you want to stop move with the plastic part uh, activate the switch and then uh, tie the screws so they they don't move out again so if you're going to put the motor in the right side, what you have to do is revert the limit switches like it shows here. Basically the open now becomes the close and the close now becomes the open. So that's just to revert the, the, the connectors. You can revert also the switches. It doesn't matter, just revert the, those. And, and the, the adjustment is the same way. Just uh, do it with the plastic thing, with a close and for, for, for open. That's exactly the same. Uh, now the electrical connection, the wiring, if you have two motors, uh, connect it this way. And if you only have one motor, you connect it in M2, N2, and the rest, the connector, and basically motor number two. We call it, let's, let's call it motor number two. If it's only one motor. If it's two motor, obviously put it on both. What I want to point out here is that M and N is the motor itself is the DC motor itself. So you can test it putting a, with, directly with a battery. Obviously you don't go beyond 24, uh, around 12 volts works between 12 and 24. Put a battery there, it's going to move from one side. If you revert the battery, it's going to move the other side. So that's one way you can troubleshoot maybe a problem. And the other three wires are the encoder and with limit switches inside. So that's the way it, the control board can manage the, the position. Uh, so this, like I said, you have to put the hole depending on which side you put, you connect it, on the below or, or, or the upper hole. And uh, this is the recommendation of how to install it to open to the outside. Most of the time the gates open inside, but you can also install it to open to the outside. Just install it in that way. It, it, the, the operator goes in the inside and you use the measurements uh, as a guidance. Obviously it depends on the site, but you can keep this uh, as um, guidance. This is an accessory, especially the one to point out is the um, arm for sliding. Those, those first two is for sliding and uh, one's for the right side and one's for the left side. And uh, those are for the cases that there's um, obstruction when it's going to open, and there's no space for the arm particular arm then you will use this accessory so it, it, it doesn't hit the the obstruction maybe a wall for example and so keep that, that as an option and so now that we have everything installed and we have everything connected and now we can go through the control boards there's two versions the clx 24m and the clx 24s and i already do a training about this too um, but I'm going to do a very quick overview about them. This is the difference. If one is bigger, one's the other smaller. The display is different. One has a cover. One has four input. Uh, there's more details in that training. 
but I wanted to point out the basics. This is a connection I already went through. Um, then um, this is uh, okay. This is one is important because okay, if you have sometimes we have two the two gates, sometimes they overlap each other, and by default they are enable a delay between them so they don't hit each other when they're opening and closing. So by default, uh, when you open M one M two and motor number two, it's going to open first, and then M one motor number one. It's going to wait and uh, open two seconds after. And same for closing. For closing, M1 is going to close first. And after a few seconds, it's going to close uh, motor number two. So that way they don't, don't don't hit each other. You can change that delay. You can you can disable it even if, if the gates are not overlapping each other and you want to open and, and close at the same time. You can change that delay. So that's why I wanted to point out that. That's, that's done in the menu. I'm going to show that later. Uh, this is the commands where you connect, the, you can control the gate for closing, uh, opening, for stopping, depending on what you want to do. And uh, you can put, for example, uh, a keypad, you can put a key selector, you can put an external receiver for, depending on what you want, you will connect it this way, depending on what you want. The most common would be maybe two and seven. Two is the common in Kamek products. Two, pin two is uh, the common, and we use it to do commands in this case. So if you do a normally open contact between two and seven, the gate will open. And if you do a contact again, it's going to close. And you can configure that uh, to also stop or do different stuff. And two and three is for opening. And in this case, this, that's very useful. And there's a pin one and two, that's for a stop, total stop. If you enable that, uh, one and two, it, it has to be normally close contact. And if you open that contact, it's going to stop the operator. That's a safety feature that you can, by default, this is disabled, so you don't have to really be, um, deal with that if you're not going to use that feature. This is a connection for the lights. And uh, the most relevant thing would be that between 10 and five, there's a, you can put a relay. 24 volt relay and you have a state of the gate basically. It's going to have between 10 and five, it's going to have 24 volts in either position position of the gate, except close. When it reaches close position, it's going to stop the voltage, it's going to be zero. And if it start opening or any state that is not close, it's going to have 24 volts AC. So you can use, like I said, with a relay to have a state, you can use it with a light in either way. Um, this is a, also another thing to keep in mind with this uh, control board is that between 10 and 11, you can power up uh, accessories. You can power, power up basically anything that has 24 volts AC between 10 and 11. Pin 10 and pin 11. And this is a connection for the electric lock also. If you're going to use it. This is a photo cell. You have to power the photo cell. In this case, uh, the manual, each photo cell is different. In this case, the manual asks for 10, the, the power is 10 and two. It's going to be 12 volts between 10 and two. And in this case, has a receiver and a sender. The sender has a, a transmitter, has the only two cables that goes to the receiver. And there's a normally closed contact that you need to connect between two, that is the common, and CX or either, or, or either of the other inputs. So you see CX, CY, CZ, and CK. Those are safety inputs that you can configure. So you can use either of those between two and either of those. In this case, we can use CX and then we have to enable it later. I'm going to show in the menu. So the way we program everything, now that you have everything connected, is with two, with four buttons and a display. So the first button will be escape. Obviously go to backwards, go back. And if the motor is moving, you can, if you, and if you're not in the menu, you can stop the gate from moving if you press escape. The left and right arrow, obviously to navigate the menu and enter to confirm a setting or also to enter the menu. So let's do that, uh, the basic steps. I'm going to show the, uh, the steps. And I'm going to th go through the basic step will be, first will be amount of motors. Mm -hmm. So you have basically had to tell the gate, the control board, how many operators you have connected. 
So it's if it's only one motor or two motors, basically those two options. A second thing, basic step will be motor type. So these control boards can manage a variety of operators, 24 volts operators. So you have to tell which operator you have connected there. Then if you have a operator that is not even CAM, it's another brand, you can use a generic. And that way you just have to connect two wires for each operator. In this case, we're going to choose Fernie. I'm going to show that later. And third step would be enabling safety devices like photo cells, for example. If you remember, we're going to use CX, uh, input CX. So we need to enable that one, depending on what you want to do. Add users, that's optional, but usually there's a remote control or a few remote controls that you have to program. So you have to add those. And travel calibration, that's the last basic step they need to do at the, at the end of the installation. There's a cali the, the calibration will be um, a procedure that is going to close the gate and going to open. And it's, you're going to use that to, with the encoder, it's going to remember all, how many revolutions the motor did for the entire travel. And that way it's going to know exactly where the gate is at all time. You're going to use that for slowdowns and for detecting obstructions and stuff like that. So we're going to do it uh, now in a real, real life uh, example. So this is the control board. Obviously, I had to press enter to get to the menu. The first menu is configuration. You can navigate the main menu with the arrows. So there's many options there. Uh, if they are, I suggest you go to configuration. So you press enter, and then find find the wizard. There's a really useful tool. Uh, the wizard basically goes through the, all the basic steps that we went through. And, but it's going to do it step by step so you don't have to go through the menu manually. So I, that's why I'm showing right now every, all, everything in configuration. But you can go faster if you go left. But either way, you just, just go configuration and wizard and press enter to get there. So, like I said before, uh, first it's going to ask the number of motors. Right now, I have only M2, it means only have one motor. In, in installing M2. If you had two motors, it's M1 and M2. But in this case, in this example, I'm going to have only one motor. So it's connected only M2. So that's step one. Save that. So step two will be motor type. Like I said, you can manage a bunch of operators. So you choose Fernie in this case. We have the Fernie. Motor check, that's a very useful tool. So in this situation, just hold the left arrow to open motor number one and hold the right arrow to open motor number two. If that motor doesn't move, maybe there's a problem with the wiring. If that motor closed instead of opening, and then you have to revert the, also the wiring, the end and end. So that way you can check that everything is connected and moving correctly. After that, so you can enable the safety inputs. In this case, there's a safety, there's a photo cell in CX. So I'm going to enable CX input and the, uh, and you have many options. The most common is C1. There's reopen while closing. That's the most common, but you have to choose which you want to do. So I'm going to, going to choose C1 and press enter to confirm. There's another safety input, but I don't have anything connected there. I'm not going to use it. So I, I, I keep it off. There's another input. So this board has four inputs. I'm going to use only one. So the rest I'm going to leave off. Then you have, you can use add a user that's a remote control and you need the control, the board IAF card installed so you can receive remote controls. And then you tell the board what you want to do with the button. Step by step will be open and close. If that button open, close, open, close. And there's a very popular sequential that is open, stop, close, stop. Very popular way to control it. So you choose whatever you want to do, the button to do. And once you choose, you just press enter and it's going to be ready to receive the signal from the remote control. So when it's ready, just press the, the remote control and it's going to receive it and say store it in number one. There's, there's many, there are many, you can uh, record many remote controls. The last step is travel calibration and uh, confirm yes. And like I said, it's going to close the gate and then it's going to open. And when it's in a, when it finished opening, it means the calibration is over and it's ready to reuse. 
But there are many other options. So let's go through a few of them. Uh, first is that you, you can control the gate with the, with the left and arrow, left and right arrows, left for open and right for close. So for installing, it's very useful for doing tests. And you can use escape for stopping the gate also. Uh, so, but let's go through the menu, a few options that maybe you want to change. Uh, one thing maybe is in configuration and in, uh, let's do um, run settings. So you can control the opening speed and closing speed. But the fault is 70%. So maybe you want to change it to 100%. That's one suggestion. Um, that's for opening and also for closing. Um, yeah, do the same, it's 70% by default. I put 100%. Another thing that you might want to change is the um, automatic closing. And obviously you need a photo cell for that. Just go in the main menu configuration and go times. And times you see, um, see the automatic closing, automatic close. And you choose the amount of seconds you want the gate to remain open before closing automatically. And there are many other options. Obviously, you can check it out in the in the menu, menu. And hopefully, that at least we go through the basic step. Hopefully, you you understand and was useful. So then, see so if you have any questions. Always check out the YouTube channel. We always have um, videos about configuring everything, installation, and you still have problems we always uh, available in the phone or an email so don't don't be shy to reach out and so okay so uh, thank you for your attention and see you next time bye bye